So how do you navigate in Flutter? And how do you send an object through navigation in Flutter? These are things we'll go over in this tutorial, so I hope you're looking forward to it. And before we begin, just a brief message from our sponsor. If you're interested in any or all of these classes, it's definitely worth to check out Skillshare. Get a free month of Skillshare and stream more than 18,000 online classes on subjects like design, business and tech. Link is in the description. So let's just dive into it. So what we'll do is instead of having this stateful example that we did in the last tutorial, we'll change this back to the login page. So it's this one, let's change the name to login. And hot restart just to see if it's working. So now we have our layout example. So instead of email, let's just type username for a better login page for better explanation. So what we'll do now is to, instead of having a submit button, we will have a sign in button and we can call a anonymous function here. So in here on the on pressed, we can navigate to another screen. So navigate to another screen. Uh, so let's just create a home page. So create a stateful widget, set the home and add a scaffold with a app bar. And let's just add a body with a center also. There we go. So to navigate to another screen, you can call a method called navigator. And we have, or a class called navigator, and we have this different method. So we have a push, and that's one we will try first. So push, and we call the context and the route, which will be the material page route. And that requires a builder, so let's just pass the context and then pass the home page. So let's try that. So we have our sign in button, and if we press that, we will navigate to that screen. So that's working fine. So let's pass in the username to the sign in so we can display the username up in the app bar. So let's first, as we can see, we have no, no way of checking what's actually typed into the username or password. So let's just create a, a text editing controller, username controller. Like that. We will only do it for the username for now. So we can add a controller to the text field of the username and we pass in the username controller. So what we can do now is we can actually call something from this username controller. So we can call username controller and then we can uh, get, the, get the text of that controller. So that will throw an error and that's because we don't have an actual constructor for this. So home doesn't take any string. So let's just give it that. So let's create a variable called final string username. And we call the construct, uh, we create a constructor, this.username. And now it doesn't throw an error. The only thing right now is that it won't actually do anything with that value. So we we send that value over to the home page. We have a final field right here. And then we can in the app bar we can type the title, we can create the text, and then we can call this. So to call from the, the parent class, we can have a widget dot username. So if we hot reload this again and we give it a username, so testing one, two, three. We sign in and then you can see that we have the title. So that's a way to send the object. And you can also uh, send out over classes or anything you actually want. So uh, that is one thing. Uh, we can also do a 
push replacement. So what push did is that when you sign in, it will call a, a page and add it to the stack of your navigators or navigations. So that will give it the back button. And the same if you press the back button on Android. And if you have push replacement, and you type something in here and sign in, it won't have a back button. And if I press the back button on Android, it will close the app. So I won't do that right now. So go back to push. And see if it's working. It's working, yeah. So what we also can do is that we can, for example, if we are in this homepage, we can add a child to the center. We can add a raised button. Raised button, there we go. We can have a, call, we can call the navigator again and we can pop just to show this is what what happens if you press the back button so if we sign in and we press this button it should yeah it should close the page because we call the pop uh, pop also have a optional parameter called result this will be if you press this button or if you want to send something back to the page below it so we can give it a string uh, so navigated back success. So now how do we get this string from the page below it? So this page. So how do we get this um, page again? So we can add a, so before we call the push or the navigator.push, we can create a variable called string um, value for now. And then we can see that it only returns a future, so we can await this. And Alt entered on await to add a async modifier. So await is another way of writing then here, but it's a lot more clean in my opinion. So let's just write await there and we can print this value. So let's just print that. So let's just log in now. So we have a testing account. We sign in and then we have our button, which will, if we press that should print this uh, text that we typed here, but it will print it from this page instead. There we go. So if we press that, it printed navigated back to success. Uh, so that is all for this tutorial. This should give you the basics of navigating between pages and also send objects and send objects back. Uh, I hope you liked the tutorial. If you like it, please let me know in the comments. If you dislike it, also let me know. Like and subscribe, and I hope you like it. So, see you in the next tutorial.